nestled in the seventh chapter of the Epistle to the Hebrews is a dynamic statement of Christ's power. Hebrews 7, verse 25. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. For he ever lives to make intercession for them. Let us pray. Blessed living Lord Jesus Christ, our life, our hope, our peace, our power. We have come to meet you. We need you. Fill us with your power. In your holy name, amen. I've learned from experience that every time I speak, there are at least five groups of people present. Four of those groups are asking a basic question. The fifth group knows the answer and is trying to live it. The question is, why be a Christian? Why? What difference does it make? The first group is made up of the undecided, those who are honest inquirers into Christ. They are looking at the Christian life and wondering, is it true? Does it work? Will it make any difference? Should I give my life to it? They're listening right now, and they want to know. And then the second group is made up of the unintentional, those who have been raised in the Christian faith, a part of a Christian family, in and around the church all of their lives, but are not intentional disciples. They're asking the question, is it worth it? Why be a Christian? It's never meant that much to me. The third group are made up of the uncommitted. They've heard about the price of uh, following Jesus Christ, the cost of discipleship. They know that to be faithful and obedient to Christ means living out his ethical demands, his moral purity, his commitment in every area of life. And they're wondering, why be a Christian? No one else is. No one else is taking Christ seriously. Everyone else is compromising. Why? Why should I be a Christian? The fourth group is made up of the unfulfilled. People who are facing difficult problems that are way beyond them. The winds of adversity are blowing against them. And they're wondering, why? I've believed in Christ all of my life, and yet I don't seem to have the abundant power that he offers. Why is it that when life falls apart, I find it so difficult? Why be a Christian if when life goes bump, I don't have what it takes? And then there's a fifth group. Perhaps it's made up of all of the rest. It might be described as the group populated by the unsatisfied. I'd put myself into that category. Though I've been a Christian for a lot of years, I feel I've barely scratched the surface. I believe I have a relationship with Christ, but I want to grow in it. Now, have I covered everyone? Would you fit into one of those categories? And are you articulating the question from these various standpoints? Why be a Christian? 
Try this one on for size. Because Christ himself is the answer. He is able. He has all of the power that exists. His power is the only power that is not corruptible. And everything that the scriptures tell us he is, he has the power to make real to you and me right now. He is unqualified love. And he says to you, I love you just as you are. He is the forgiveness of God. And he says, whatever you've done, whatever you've been, I forgive you. He's the joy of God. Not happiness, but joy. And he has the power to produce that kind of joy in your life. He's the patience of God. And he gives us patience to endure. He's the hope of God. And when things seem to go against us, he takes a hold of us and gives us hope that regardless of what happens, God will use it and glorify himself in the midst of it. Why be a Christian? Because Christianity is a person, a relationship with the living Christ himself. Why be a Christian? Because in him we meet God personally, realize his love and his power, his acceptance, his courage and his strength. We can't live without it. Why be a Christian? Because it's knowing a person intimately, personally, in a dynamic relationship that begins at a definite time and continues to grow through the years. Therefore, he is able, he has power to love you and care for you and forgive you and help you begin a new life. I became a Christian in 1948. I met the Savior in a dynamic, unreserved commitment of my life at that moment. And I want to tell you that all through the years of studying and praying and living in fellowship with other Christians, my relationship with him has become more personal and more dynamic and more wonderful as the hours and the days go by. But I feel that I've barely begun to know him. Why be a Christian? Because being a Christian is an intimate relationship with Christ. He's everything to me. Is he to you? But why be a Christian? We persist. Move on. Because he is able to save to the uttermost. Let me save the word, save, from its misuse and disuse in our culture. We've had so many people ask us, are you saved? And we've heard the preaching of the gospel so long and the word used over and over again that we've lost the dynamic of this cornucopian word that just overflows with blessing. The word in Greek is sozo. It's everything that Christ has done for us, is doing for us right now, and will do for us. Christ is able to save. That's why we should be a Christian. There's no salvation any other place than in him. You see the signs on top of churches that say, only Jesus saves. And then we see in our own lives and the lives of Christians that we draw the source of our security not just from Christ, but from so many other things until finally our relationship with Christ is compromised that only Christ can save. The word means deliverance, healing, wholeness. And from what does Christ deliver us and to what does he bring us? 
We need to remember it, to rejoice in it again at whatever stage we are. If you're undecided, you need to hear this. If you've once made a decision and have grown cold, you need to be warmed at its fires. Jesus Christ is able to save because he saves us from sin. Well, you say, there you go again. Same old words, I've heard that all of my life. I'm no sinner. If you're not in a deep, intimate relationship with Christ right now, you're in sin. An acrostic approach to the word means separation, independence, and nihilism. It's being separated from the Lord for whom we were created. It means living our life on our own strength and being determined that we will make our own way regardless. And it leads to nihilism, eventually saying, what does it all mean? What difference does it make? Why be a Christian? Because Jesus Christ will come into that state of our separation and independence and lack of meaning and will grasp us by the shoulders and say, you belong to me, I love you, and I'll never let you go. Why be a Christian? No other religion in the world has that kind of a savior. Rules and regulations and rites and rituals and mumbo-jumbo of every kind, but not a personal savior. He's my savior. Is he yours? But not only a deliverance from sin, that is, separation from him, but also a deliverance from sins. Try it on. Remember all of the things that you've said or done or been that you wish you hadn't said or done or been. Take back onto yourself all of the guilt and the hurt, the anguish of every failure. Think back to the people that you've hurt, the cutting words that you've spoken, the times that you gave in to what you never wanted to do. Think of it. Without Jesus Christ, you've got to carry that by yourself. Why be a Christian? Because Christ forgives sins. And you can take all of those things that are aching inside you and put them at the garbage heap at the foot of the cross right now. Why be a Christian? Because only Christians are free. But he delivers us from fear by perfect love, from boredom that makes life bland and routine, from self-centeredness, that focuses us in on ourselves rather than other people. He saves us. He delivers us from that. But that's only part of it. He delivers us in order to heal us. That means that he takes a hold of the tissues of our brain and actually heals the thoughts that have been collected through the years, the formation of our personality. He reorders us and makes us into a new creation. Why be a Christian? What other faith offers that? None. He heals us. But more than that, he makes us whole. The very meaning of the word saved or salvation means wholeness. It means the ordering of the mind and the emotions, the will and the body as a unified whole. He takes away the brokenness, the distortions. He makes us free. He makes us healthy personalities again. Only Christ offers that. But he comes to save to the uttermost. The word in Greek is pantilis, which means completely and absolutely, for now and all time. So Jesus Christ offers us salvation, which is permanent, perpetual, 
and in perpetuity. No one else offers that. Why be a Christian? Because right at this moment, you can settle your destiny and where you will spend eternity. But more than that, the Christ who takes us on as his people never lets us go. And so the experience of his deliverance and wholeness and healing becomes perpetual because he's called us to spend eternity in heaven. Now, let me ask you, if this were to be the day of your physical demise, do you know where you would spend eternity? Only Christians know. Why be a Christian? Because we were created to live forever. But we can't stop there. Why be a Christian? Because in Jesus Christ we have an eternal cheerleader. Not only does he save to the uttermost, but he ever lives to make intercession for us. That means that with all of the millions of people that are the primary center of his concern, he knows you by name, individually, personally, and he's cheering for you. He takes your needs and brings them to the Father and says, Father, look at your beloved child. He or she needs this or that. And then, like the great high priest, he goes to God and then brings the blessing of God back to us he never leaves us alone. He'll never forsake us. In our low times, he comes with just the right word of courage and strength and comfort and love. Why be a Christian? Who else has a savior like that? He comes to us when we're about to make a decision. He discounts the dead ends and shows us the open way. He comes to us in the midst of our deepest inner anguish. And he takes our inner feelings and straightens them out, helps us to know what caused them, and then releases us from the prison that we've created for ourselves. Robert Murray McShane said, listen to Christ praying for you. What would you hear if you listened in and heard him praying in the next room? What would he be saying about you and for you? And what would he be wanting to bring to you from the living God. Every so often I do that. I just sit quietly and listen to Jesus praying for me. And suddenly I know what it is that I'm to do. The next step, the forgiveness, the restitution, the new power that he has for me. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Can you hear him cheering for you? He's not against you, he's for you. Say it in your own heart. Christ is for me. Christ is for me. Christ is for me. Christ is for me. And how do you know him? If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes to righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. And it can happen right now. And so move through the categories again. I feel profound empathy for each group. If you've never made a decision to give him your life, do it right now. If you've been undecided and satisfied with a bland cultural Christianity, meet the Savior now. If you've been uncommitted, holding him off from the areas of your life, open yourself to him now and invite him down the corridors, into your family, into your marriage, into your job. Make a commitment of yourself and get started. If you're unfulfilled, invite him to live in you. If you're unsatisfied, Tell him that you've barely begun and that you want to grow in the relationship that really brings life. Why be a Christian? 
It's the only way to live now and forever. <laughs>